Okay, here we are on page six um, of lines. Number five, a landscape architect has planned four new paths in a, in, the, in a park. The paths are straight lines as shown in the diagram below. Find the equations of the paths, L1, L2, L3, and L4. Okay, so let's do L1 first. So L1 is this one, so this line here. It wants to find the equation of the line. This line here, um, it clearly shows the y-intercept right? The y-intercept is this point here, and it's pretty easy to figure out the slope. So we could uh, find it by uh, those two methods, right? We could find the, the y-intercept and the slope. Now, if you ever have a diagram with a line on it, you can use LinReg to find the, the equation for the line. So you could just um, take two points. I'm going to take these two points here. One of them is 0, 0, and the other one is 4, 2. And I'm just going to put those into StatCalc LinReg. I'm going to clear these out by going to on top of L2, and I press clear. Go on top of L1, I press clear. Um, don't press delete because that deletes the list, okay? So I'm going to put 0, 0 as my first point, and my second point is going to be four comma two. Okay, and then I'm going to stack alkaline rec and that's already going to give me the answer. And make sure the frequency list is blank and L1 and L2 are in an X and Y. And the answer is going to be for L1 it's going to be Y equals uh, 0.5x plus 0, or if you wanted to just write y equals 0.5x, that would be simplified because the plus 0 doesn't do anything, right? So that's L1. What about L2? L2, oh, that is obviously a vertical line, right? Remember what we said about vertical lines? The important thing about vertical lines is what is their x value, which in this case is negative 1 right? So that means x equals negative 1 is the equation of the vertical line. And you don't write y equals mx plus c because uh, vertical and horizontal lines are simply written x equals blah 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 or y equals blah 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 because their slopes are either 0 or infinity and it makes it uh, makes the mx plus c form look totally different, okay? Let's look at L3. L3 appears to be a, um, a horizontal line, right? L3. L3 is a horizontal line and it's located at a height of 5. So we put y equals 5 and that's the end, okay? All right. Last of all, we're going to do L4. And L4 is, uh, this is the highlighter, so it doesn't look like, okay, I'll just use blue, or um, red. So L4 is another diagonal line, and again, the y-intercept is clearly written here, it's 4, okay? And we could easily figure out the slope by drawing a triangle, etc. But just to show you how to use the new techniques you've learned, I am going to use stack up and red. kind of get you used to the idea of whenever you can use the calculator to do these problems, go ahead. So uh, one of the points is 0, 4, and another point would be 4, 0, right? So I'm going to put 0, 4 as one of the points. That would be this left point. And then I'm going to put 4, 0 as the other point. And then I'll do stack calculate red. Number four. Okay, and frequency list, of course, blank. <clears throat> and it would be y equals negative 1x 
plus 4. Okay, you might even write y equals negative x plus 4 because negative 1x is the same thing as negative x. Okay, so that's it for drawing the equations of the line, and that's all they asked us to do, so we're done. Let's go to number, number 6. Maria works as a part-time waitress in the summer and earns $30 per day plus 2% of all the food and drink sales for the day. Okay, so the more they sell, the more extra money she gets, okay? Write an equation to represent her daily earnings, A, in relation to the amount X of all the food, all the sales of foods and drinks during the day. Okay, so basically she, uh, in one day, or uh, yeah, in one day, she gets $30 plus 2%, 2% of all the food and drink sales, which is X. Now, if we wanted to write that completely with an equation, we would write, remember, when you convert 2% to um, a decimal, it's 2 por same, so it'd be 2 divided by 100, which gives us 0 0.02. Okay, you can do that in the calculator. So we have 0 0.02, and of, you do multiplication, so 0 0.02 x. Okay, so there's our equation right there. That is the answer for part A. Part B, determine the gradient. Interpret its meaning. Remember, the gradient is the part of the line which is being multiplied times x. The part of the line equation is multiplied times x. So the gradient is 0 0.02. And what does it mean? It means the it means the part of the daily food and drink sales, okay, that Maria gets. Okay? So it's it's the percentage of the daily food and drink sales that Maria gets. Alright? Determine the y intercept and interpret its meaning. Okay, so the y-intercept, remember, is the part that's not multiplied times x, so it's 30. And notice how the order I wrote this is kind of natural because first she gets the $30 and then she gets 2% per day, so I put the 30 first. But a lot of times in math, we have the slope times x first and then we have plus 30 last. So remember that the most important thing to do is identify what number is multiplied times x and what number is not. Okay, so the y-intercept is 30, and that's the amount that Maria gets uh, per day, regardless of how much they sell. So if, even if they sell zero, she gets, still gets $30 in the day, right? Okay. Um, e, find what Maria's earnings would be if the amount of food and drinks sold during a certain day were 2,400. Okay, so I'm going to show you the calculator method of doing this, okay? So... Uh, Remember that if you have an equation, go ahead and put it in your calculator because that helps you answer a lot of questions. So I put 30 plus 0 0.02x, okay, and then I graph it. And then it asks us, what would be Maria's earnings if x was 2400? How do I know that it's x? Because the amount of food and drink sold is x, right? And I graph the line, but the graph is like completely off, you know, out of the window. And uh, that's okay, because in this case, we could do the problem completely in the table. Okay, so let's look at the table. And when we look at the table, we see how much she would make if they had zero food and drink sold. She'd make 30. How much would she make if they sold $10? She would make $30.20. They want to know how much she would make if she made $2,400, okay? And so what we'd like to do is see what the y value is for x equals 2,400. We need to scroll way down, right? And it would take a really long time to scroll all the way down. So one trick you could do is you could increase the step size. So instead of jumping by ones, what if we jumped by 100? So I'm going to put plus 100. This is a technique you learned in the investigation. And then I can just scroll down to the next page and I'll be there, right? <laughs> Even this way it's going to take a little while, though, right? Okay. We're almost there. 2400. We're going to find out what how much she makes if they sell 2400, which sounds like a lot of food and drink. Okay. We're almost there. Okay. We're almost there. There we are. 2400 she'll make $78. So the answer is 78. 
And so do you see how, like, by doing this, if they ask other questions, then you're already ready to look at it from the point of view of the table. So let's just, uh, now, if I went back to plus one now, I would be stranded here at 2,400. Let me show you that. So if I go plus one, and it's like, okay, now I'm at 2,400. I'm so far away from x equals zero. How do I get back to x equals zero really quick? I could do second table set, and then I'll do table start, and I'll put zero. And that would put me right back, right back there. And so I'll do second quit to get back, and I'll get right back to, oh, and then I'll do table. And then, yeah, and then I'm back at x equals zero. Okay, so I can get back to a certain position by doing second table set, okay? I could also get right to 2,400 by doing a step size of 2,400, right? So there's all kinds of little tricks that I'm sure you can think of by yourself uh, to go around the table quickly, okay? See, I'm already there. All right. Um, if you ever mess things up, then you can always do second, oops, second table set, and then just change table start to zero and delta table to one, and then go back to the table, and then you'll be just like it was at the beginning. All right? All right, that's it for that one. Let's talk a little bit about this text that's at the bottom. If a known gradient m of a line and a known point x1, y1 on that line are substituted in the gradient formula, the relationship is m equals y minus y1 divided by x minus x1. And that is also the equation of a line, okay? Anything that just has the x and the y open with nothing filled in is an equation of a line. Okay, so, or an equation for a function, and, and if, if it's linear, then it would be a line, okay? Now, if you rearrange it, do you see how it would become this? Like, if I have m equals y minus y1 over x minus x1, and I cross multiply, then I would get m times x minus x1 equals y minus y1, and that's exactly what this is, okay? So this is more typically the way you're going to see it, not this way. Okay, so when you see it this way, this is called um, a point gradient form, point slope form, because this is a great form to start with if you happen to know the slope and you happen to know a point on the line that is not the y-intercept. If you knew the y-intercept and the slope, then you would call it a gradient intercept form, right? If you know a point that is not the y-intercept and the gradient, then we would call it point gradient form or point slope form. And this is a really useful form too. And thank goodness, one of the changes to the syllabus was they decided that um, they were going to put this point for slope form, and it's right here. They decided to put it in the formula booklet so you don't have to memorize it anymore. Now you can just look at the formula booklet and use it, okay? So the, that excerpt up there is from the formula booklet. All right, and the last form, which is almost completely useless, is called standard form. And the standard form looks like that. Y, um, it looks like AX plus BY plus C, where A, B, and C are, <coughs> um, it says here that A, B, and C are real numbers, okay, which means uh, like decimals or whatever. Uh, sometimes uh, they'll ask you to put it in this form and they want A, B, and C to be integers. Uh, and basically to do that, you just need to like multiply by the exact right number. Okay, so if it's standard form, the key is that one side of the equation is zero and the other side of the equation has everything on it. So you might think, what the heck is this form? The idea of standard form is to make sure that one of the sides is zero, right? The idea of uh, gradient intercept form or slope intercept form is that one of the sides is y only, right? And this, I don't know what you can say about that. Basically, you're going to use this uh, whenever you have the slope and you have a single point that is not the y-intercept, okay? Now you're ready to do the next page, but you just finished this one. See you next time.